world hunger is caused by two things, many people, and too little food. I think we have to be realistic and to realize that food production simply can't keep up with the present and the projected population growth figures for the world. You know, it took two million years for the population to reach one billion. This was 1830. And then it took a hundred years to add that second billion by 1930. Thirty years to add a third billion by 1960. And we'll add our fourth billion this year, only 15 years later. The fifth billion is expected to come about in only 10 years. For example, Bangladesh. Now, here's a country about the size of Missouri. And in just 25 years, their population is projected to exceed that of the entire United States of America. Indonesia, if it maintains its present growth rate, will see its population of 120 million explode to 1.78 billion in the next century. And that's half the present population of the entire Earth. Mexico, for example, 49% of her population right now is under the age of 15. And this plus their population growth will give that country 1.3 billion people in the next century compared to our present 213 million Americans. And, you know, in some of these countries, family planning is a, is a religious matter. And I understand that. But in many, it has nothing to do with religion. It's a matter of pride. Many of these countries are faced with runaway population, and they have no plans to do anything about it. They were the ones who were at the population conference in Bucharest last year who condemned the United States and our recommendation that we establish some kind of world population stabilization plan. Instead of facing up to the fact the world hunger is caused by too many people as well as not enough food. They sought to lay the blame of world food hunger on the doorsteps of the United States. They accused the American consumers of eating too much, the American producers for producing too little, and the American people for not sharing enough. You know, when I brought up the subject of family planning to some of the foreign ministers of the overpopulated countries recently, I was told that this was a dirty word in their country. I reacted by saying that helping countries around the world that are not willing to help themselves is becoming a dirty word in America, too. You know, the developed countries of the world have a responsibility to help feed the less fortunate of the world, to provide them with the money, the know-how, so they can expand their ability to feed themselves. But they have an equally important responsibility, and that's to level with the leaders of the less fortunate countries of the world. And and to let them know that food production simply cannot keep up with the current population growth rates. In other words, the leaders of countries with little food, runaway population growth, and no plans to do anything about either, simply have to be put on notice that the time will come when there won't be enough food to feed their people. But they better start doing something about it now. The bill that I've introduced establishes that none of the nearly one billion dollars we give away in food each year will go to any country, emergency situations accepted, whose population growth exceeds that of the world average where that country has no plans whatsoever in the area of population stabilization. This bill simply says that Americans will continue to be generous with their food. But we'll see to it that our food that is given away goes to those countries who are willing to help themselves. That's fair. Some have said that my proposal is a bit cold-hearted and have asked if it isn't humane. I don't think so. I think it's far more humane to tell the world now rather than 10 or 15 years later. 10 to 20 million starving people a year tell them in a far more dramatic way.